channel, God blesses me, to Nature Thomas with Keeping It Real, GBP. God before business, before pleasure, real talk, and we're going to be talking about King David, who's a prophet. We're going to be talking about the prophet Isaiah, and we're going to be talking about Jesus, because you know what? There was prophets then, and there's prophets now. Uh, we're going to be doing some study, so we're calling this study time, and we're going to be getting God's words. Uh, we're going to be understanding him and not, not man, because you know what? Prayer is... Uh, everything and you know the things that um king david i'm gonna call because he, he was a prophet prophet king david uh things that god put on his heart he wrote down or things that he wanted to say to god he said it because he was teaching us how to keep our hearts right with the lord so the first thing we're going to start off because i wrote myself a little note see tore my on pieces of paper and we're going to write read psalms uh 16, 1 through 2, verse 1 through 2. It says, Keep me safe, O God, for I have come to you for refuge. I said to the Lord, You are my master. Every good thing I have comes for you. And we're going to stop right there because the thing is, everything that we have comes from me. Every good thing that we have, you know, and God told us, uh, He lets us know Jesus, uh, the Father, Son, and Messiah, you know, let us know. He provides for the just and the unjust. We got to, you know, people got to understand all the food that's on this world. He made, he thought of it and it came. Uh, the water that we drink, the foods that we eat, the fruits, the vegetables, the animals. God created it all. He's the creator. We're the creations. And, you know, he says, you know, all things that he made was good. But guess what? Uh, the devil, he turned things for evil. He made greed, jealousy, and strife. Envy and all these things are not of God. You know, God desired wisdom and integrity from the beginning. And we're going to be reading about that because we're going to be reading his words, studying his words, and letting him break it down in the mighty name of Jesus. The next thing that we're going to do, and we know King David did the most, uh, wrote the majority of all Psalms. And a lot of people said uh, King David was gay. King David wasn't gay. That is the devil putting uh, things in your heart that's not a God. God says always read his words with uh, a pure heart, clean hands, and sincere lips. And, you know, uh, I have been out there. God has sent me all over. When I was in Connecticut, there was a pastor, Pastor Paul. Uh, he says, yeah, uh, Basically, Ruth, uh, not Ruth, uh, Naomi gave, you know, Bozar, you know what he was trying to say, uh, pleasure. And everybody know if that was true, she would have been stoned. Uh, she wouldn't have been a woman of integrity. She wouldn't have been a, a woman of God. She would have been a woman of the world. And she would have got killed. He wouldn't even want a woman like that because Bozar fell in love for, with her for who she was and how faithful and loyal she was to the Lord and to what he's seen, what she did for Ruth. So we just getting out there. We getting all truth out there. So we washing up all these lies. So if y'all thinking that King David was gay, guess what? That's because your heart is not on Christ. Your heart is on wickedness. It's not on righteousness. And that's the devil telling you that he was gay because he going to try to tell me that one time. And I'm like, no, he wasn't. My heart is pure. My hands are clean and my lips are sincere. On uh, Psalm 17, we're going to read the whole thing. We're going to let him break it down. And I pray that all this get to come to pass. If not, we're going to have to make it two, three studies. But we're going to be reading the word. And, you know, it's all about the words, about God's word. He says, Oh, Lord, hear my plea for justice. Listen to my cry for help. Pay attention to my prayers, for it comes from honest lips. Declare my innocent, for you see those who do right. God sees all. When we're not in righteousness, uh, he knows it. Does he know that we was going to do that? Yes, he does. But he's a forgiving God. He's a merciful God. And he says, come to me. Ask me for forgiveness. He says, repent, repent, and repentance uh, is the same thing. But when you repent and you truly from your heart, you would get repentance. You, you would get repentance and he would deliver you from the things and he will forgive you because our God is a forgiving God. And he sees all. He says, for you see those who do right. And we got to keep ourselves doing what is righteous because it's a spiritual war and the spirits are very powerful, but God holds all power. Uh, Psalm 17, verse 3 says, You have tested my thoughts and examined my heart in the night. You have scrutinized me and found nothing wrong. I'm determined not to sit in what I say. I have followed your commands, which keep me from following cruel and evil people. My steps have stayed on your path. I have not wavered from following you. I am praying to you because I know you will answer, O oh God. Be in town to listen as I pray. 
The thing is, when we in righteousness, he hears our prayers, prayers of the righteousness. The ones who's being in obedience, he's there. He's there for everybody, even when we're, we're, we're rebelling against him. But when we're coming to that light and everything we're asking for, he is just answering the glory to God. And that's why, you know, King David, he was writing these words because God put these words on King David's heart. Prophet is King David's heart. So he could write these things because God was telling us, hey, come to me. You know, with some clean hands, a pure heart, and sincere lips. And uh, the Beatitudes, you know, he always said, the pure in heart should see my face. And I tell everybody, that's why I see him. Uh, but I tell people, you know, you know who I am in God's kingdom. So if they have somebody that it may have be jealous of my relationship and nobody should be jealous of nobody's relationship. Because I tell you now, there's going to be prophets that God's going to be using in the future that's going to be doing way more than me. And I'm like, hallelujah already. And that's what we're learning uh, from him and you know we learned that he's always with us and that was in Psalm 17 and we read one through uh let me see one through eight and you know I'm trying to get as much in as possible but my phone records and you know when it stops it's over then I gotta upload it and it, it's 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 over with but, you know, what I want to do is read Psalms 22. We're going to get a little, we're getting a little from a little everywhere because the devil is coming in and he's trying to, he's lying and his job is to lie, kill, and destroy, but he can't destroy God's children. The reason why we're reading Psalms uh, 22, verse 22 to 23, because, you know, the Lord told um, Prophet King David to write these things down. And in Psalms 22, it's all Jesus' words, what he was going to do, what he was going to go through, and what he was going to cry so that we could do, we could have our salvation, so we could know about repentance, so we could know that he took upon on all our sins, and we took upon on all our burdens. And I urge you to read all of Psalms 22. Uh, read it in the Life Recovery Bible, and also get you a King James Version uh, Amplifying Study Bible, because it'll really help you uh, get closer to God and better within your walk in Jesus name. Now what I'm getting ready to read is Psalms 22 verse 22 to 25. Psalms 22 verse 20, uh, Psalms 22 verse 22 to 25. It reads like this. I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. I will praise you among your assembly people. Assembly. He didn't say church. He says assembly. So he's he's letting us know that the people will come together in an assembly. So we come together in different places to worship God. We are the church. The Holy Spirit is in us. And when we're doing wickedness, when we're in wickedness and when we're in our wrongful doing, when we're in that world, we devour the Holy Spirit of living God because he's in us. Jesus Christ is in us. But he says, I'm dying for this. You know, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. I will praise you among the your assembly people. Praise the Lord, all you who fears him, honor him, all you descendants of Jacob, show him reverence, all you descendants of Israel, for he has not ignored or belittled the suffering of the needy. He has not turned his back on them, but has listened to their cries for help. Amen. That was verse 24, 25. I will praise you in the great assembly. I will fulfill my vows in the presence of those who worship you. Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Devil, you're a lie. See, the devil, the devil tells uh, uh, people, God's children, you don't got to go praise God. The devil tells people, oh, as long as you know his words, it's okay. It's more than knowing his words. It's about knowing his words, living by every word, breathing every word, and doing the will of God. And Jesus says, I died. So, you know, we could come together in a great assembly because we're the church and we're the ones that holler out, amen, hallelujah, the Holy Spirit is in us. But he says, praising him at the great assembly, the ones who's fearing God. So when we're fearing God, we're not fearing uh, nothing in the world. We're only fearing the, uh, the Lord. We love him. We're in love with the son. We're in love with the angels. We love everybody. We always show uh, people what Christ shows us because Christ leads us. We're the we're the the loaf of bread. Okay, he we ate off of his body. We drunk his blood. So we were coming on one loaf of bread. So we are praising God for that. We're gonna also read uh, Psalm twenty three verse one, and I'm gonna read another life recovery Bible, and it says. 
The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. And that's the one thing God gives us all our needs. Uh, it's the wants that that's getting us in trouble. I want this. I want that. God says, I've given you all your, your, your needs. But he also gives us our wants. And when he increases us, we're ready to get increased. And when he is increasing us like he increased David. When he increased David, David shared everything that he got. And even when um, King David, prophets King David's people, when he, uh, when they didn't want to share it with the other men and the other people, King David says no. Even though they didn't come with us, they were too tired, they still get some of the plunder because that's what God does. Says, hey, you know what? Ain't none of us right, but, you know, my blessings come upon all you guys. Remember, he provides for the just and the unjust, but everybody's not going back. So that is something right there. And the devil's out. He's lying. He said, like, don't go praise God. Don't go worship God. Stay at home. Don't go to, don't go to the assembly. That's all right. You're a child of God. He's going to forgive you. And Jesus, that's one of the things he died for. Okay, we're in Psalms 29. We're going to read all of that. It says, because it, it tells you about the heavenly beings. It, it tells you about us, and it tells you that he has all power, which Jesus came down and says, you know what? When he was talking to uh, Peter and the disciples, he says, all you got to do is ask the Lord to, to, uh, to, 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 Lord, let the winds be still. And we said in Jesus' name, and that's what Jesus was down here teaching us about our power that we have within uh, him, the Father, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, uh, how we reign, how we have dominion. But he says all these things start with love. It starts with hope, faith, belief, trust. And if you got all those and forgiveness, oh, he just got only forgiveness. All these things work forgiveness because in the word of God, he says, how can uh, you expect me to forgive you, but you can't forgive your brother? He's the one when we sin against, we sin against the Holy uh, Spirit of the living God. Psalms 29 says, honor the Lord, you heavenly beings. He's talking about the angels. Honor the Lord for his glory and his strength. He holds all strength and he holds all glory. Honor the Lord for the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in his splendor of holiness because he's holy. Oh, Lord, is he holy. The voice of the Lord echoes above the sea. God, he said, hey, it echoes above the sea. You know, it vibrates. He, it makes that sea go. Um... The God of glory thunders. He controls the thunder. The Lord thunders over the mighty sea. He, he thunders. And all the thunders and the lightning is all him. And that's what, you know, Psalms 29 is about. He's telling you uh, this lightning, these earthquakes, uh, the winds. I control all that. And he says, if you pray to me, you know, if I'm revealing to you that something like this is going to happen, it's just like the tornado. When he told me about it, I, you know, and he and I, the night that I thought it was going to happen, he woke me up again. I'm saying, love, 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 wake up. And we talk, and I'm like, why do you have to do this? He says, I got to show my power. These are his powers, so I urge you. Read Psalms 29. My, this phone that I got, it don't last that long. And when it's over, it's over. I got to upload something, and then I got to download it. At, I mean, I got to upload it. Then I'm going to put study one, study two, study three. But we're going to get these things together. And I urge all you guys to actually... Uh, read these things because the things these are very uh, good tools but we're gonna keep on going if it stops it stop we're gonna do a one two and three how many we got to do and we're gonna start back in verse four the voice of the lord is powerful the voice of the lord is majestic the voice of the lord splits the mighty cedar the lord uh, shatters the cedars of Lebanon. he makes the lemons mountain skip like a calf he makes mount Hermon leap like a young wild ox we're going to stop right there on number six. And the thing is, he says, if you have the faith of the mustard seed, you can move mountains spiritually, mentally, and physically. And the thing is, when he stopped um, all those blizzards through Arizona and New Mexico, that was, you know, my faith, my belief, my hope, and my trust. And what I asked him for, he, he did it. That was when I was in Connecticut, you know, and it's supposed to rain my whole seven days when I was in Connecticut in New York. And I said, Lord, let it be uh, weather like Alamogordo. That's when they proclaimed the snowstorm. And I said, Lord, it's not going to snow when that time comes. And he stopped and he says, no, it's not going to come when they, when, when they say it's going to come. It's going to come when I wanted to come. Did it come? Yes, it came. But it didn't do like they said it was going to do. It did like God was going to let it do. And like, you know, I tell you about the tornado. In the tornado, I knew it, but more than I, I wasn't praying nothing like Jesus. I just got to keep it real. He was praying more because honestly, he's still teaching me. But the thing is, I asked him, Lord, don't let it, you know, do like it can do because he controls all that. But Jesus was constantly praying for me, for you, for all of us because he's an intercessor. He's a prayer warrior. He's a number one. Mm -hmm, he might. Mm -hmm, he might. He's all of ours. But y'all know how I feel about Jesus. You know, and I'm just keeping it real. Um, 
And we're going to start right back. And like he says, if you got faith in mustard seed, you can move mountains spiritually, mentally, and physically. And that's when you're using Jesus' power on physically healing. Because we know that it's not us healing. We know that it's him. It's the power that's within us that's healing. So we're giving him the glory and praise. It says, the voice of the Lord strikes with bolts of lightning. Hey, every time you see lightning coming down, that is God. And if he want to take that lightning and if he want to make everything get on fire, he could do that. You know, people be like, hurry up, destroy this earth for the new one. How many of us think that we're in righteousness, but we're not in righteousness because we're still hanging on to strife, envy, animosity, getting on the phone, uh, uh, talking about each other, having cuss words in our spirit that's not of God. So you got to understand, you better be careful what you pray for because you're going to think that you're one that's ascending up and you're not descending up. I know I'm descending up because I have my right relationship with Jesus Christ and it's all about him and not about me. Uh, I'm his servant. And I love serving him. I tell you guys, I'm his personal servant. He says, the voice of the Lord makes the bare wilderness quake. The earthquakes. The Lord shakes the waters of Kadash. The voice of the Lord twists the mighty oak. We're talking about uh, tornadoes and everything and uh, strips the forest beer. When he comes in with fire, when he comes in with lightning, when he comes in with a tornado, he's stripping the forest beer. He could take everything out, but guess what? He can make it rain and he can plant seeds right there and guess what? It's going to be a brand new, better mountain. Can't nobody destroy what God has made. The only person that can really destroy what God has made when it comes to this earth is God. Somebody can start a wildfire right somewhere and God will let it rain and let, let it let it uh, not start and go because if he wants to rain, it can rain. But he says we're supposed to always praise him, glorify him, and thank him in all things that we do. And, you know, we're going to keep on going. Uh, the voice of the Lord twists the mighty oak and strips the forest beer in his temple. Everybody shouts, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Because that's what we shout. <laughs> that's what we sing up there to him. The Lord rules over the flood waters. The, royal the Lord reigns as king forever. The Lord gives his people strength. The Lord blesses us with peace. And you got to understand, God has always given us peace. And Jesus, when he left here, he says, I'm giving you two gifts, peace of mind and peace of heart. When you're in that peaceful state, when you're in that peace of mind and peaceful heart, you're not worrying about what everybody else is saying about you. You're not worrying about what somebody's speaking over you. You're not worrying about no lies because you know where you're at in, in God's kingdom. And you're not out there spreading rumors. You're not out there gossiping. You're, you're not out there doing the things of wickedness. You're doing the things of righteousness. So you really don't um, trip on things that's going on. Glory to God. Glory to God. I hope that wasn't an emergency, but we got to keep on going. And my daughter, she just called me my daughter, Jasmine. So, Jasmine, you look at YouTube. Mommy is uh, doing Jesus. And, you know, Jesus always comes first. But I'm praying there ain't nothing going on over there in Jesus' name. In Psalms 51, we finna read that. And like I said, if it goes off, it goes off. It's going to be, I'm going to upload it and we're going to go back. We're going to keep on going forward because we're going to be reading the book of Isaiah, Prophet Isaiah. And we're looking at Prophet King David. And that we're looking because it talks about the relationship and the prophecy that has already been fulfilled and how he's telling us what to do and and just to do him and don't worry about nothing else. Fear him and uh, we will have peace, uh, physically peace and spiritual peace, everything peace. Oh, praise God. Mind, body, spirit, soul, heart, because you got to understand he cares about uh, the anguish of our soul. That's why we in Psalms 51. And this is how it reads. Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfallen love, because of your great compassion. Blot out the stains of my sins. Wash me clean of my guilt. Purify me. Uh, purify my purify me from my sins, for I recognize my rebellion. It hunts me down day and night. Against you and you alone I have sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. You will be proven right in what you say, and your judgment against me is just. Okay, we're stopping right there. For number one, when we are sitting up there and uh, the things that he said that we're going to do against him, we do against him. But when we come to the light, when we come to the divine light, we come and we start doing what is right. But we got to always remember how we rebelled against him. And see, this is where we go. For I was born a sinner. Yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. But you, Father, desired honesty from the room, teaching me wisdom even there. Okay, he says honesty. With honesty, it comes integrity. He says wisdom. He says when we was in our parents' womb, we had wisdom. We knew wrong from right. 
you got to understand, uh, we, we, we got to keep reading because I don't want to go ahead of myself. And I hope that the phone don't stop. But if it does, we're going to upload this and we're going to keep on going and we're going to know where we stopped at. So it says, purify me from my sin. Uh, right here, we'll start back here at number 6, 51, 6, Psalms 51, uh, verse 6. But you desire honesty from the womb, teach me wisdom even there. Purify me from my sins, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Oh, give me back my joy again. You have broken me. Now let me rejoice. For one, the Holy Spirit, the living God, Jesus breaks us. He breaks us down. He He takes all that filth and that dirty that lies out of us. He cleanses up. We ask for forgiveness. We're always asking for forgiveness. I tell you guys out there, if you're sitting up there only asking forgiveness at nighttime before you go to sleep, do you not know? Do, do you know something that he that that he knows that he's telling you? Okay, I'm gonna take you at uh, 2 p.m. today. And, you know, if he takes you at 2 p.m. today and you ain't asking for forgiveness and you've been out there sitting all day long, you know, come on, let's think about it. Let's think about it. Repentance. Repent and repentance is something that we always continue on doing. Uh, and, you know, when we was in our parents' womb, he desired wisdom and honesty even there. And when you got honesty, you got integrity because our father is not a father of lives. It says uh, on 7, purify me from my sins. And I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Oh, give me back my joy again. Because he gives us a joy. We're, we're born with joy. You have broken me. Now let me rejoice. Do not keep looking at my sins because he doesn't do that. Remove the stains of my guilt because guilt, guilt will eat us up. The things that we did in my past, like I said, I ain't guilty of what I did. I don't feel no guilt for what I did for my kids. I got my lessons and I said, Lord, don't let them do what I did. Don't let them uh, be... Uh, treating their kids like I treated them, Lord. Let them learn from the mistakes that I made so they will not treat the kids, their kids like, uh, their kids won't have to go through the things that they went through in Jesus' name. And that's what we got to, we got to recognize what we did. We got to recognize what they seen and we like say no more. No more, Lord. We praying over everything because he says pray about everything, worry about nothing, pray over everything, everything will praise him. We made from dirt, dust, whatever you want to say, from the mountains, from, from the dirt. And we praise them. The trees praise them. The mountain praise them. The animals praise them. They know. And the only thing the snake does is crawl. And even in the word of God, we get into that later. Get into that later because, you know, we're going to talk about things. We go a little by little. My spirit just wanted to give it all to you. But it, 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 it can't do that because we come, we're, we're studying and we're talking about a better understanding. It says, oh, give me back my joy again. You have broken me. Let me rejoice. Do not keep looking at my sins. Remove the guilt. Guilt will tear us up. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. Renew a, new, renew a low spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. In the mighty name of Jesus. And that's the one thing you don't want to do. Because when we walk away from Christ, when we lose Christ, we're destined for hell. And our father says he ain't leaving nobody behind. And, you know, I got to tell you about something. Uh, we're going to start back at 12. Yesterday, the day before yesterday when I was in Staples, this man, uh, and I don't know if he was a fortune teller or a warlock. I don't know if he's seen in the future. But uh, Lord told me always be careful how I 